Hi, my name is Kimmer Collison Riss, and I'm here today to talk to you about sensory processing disorder in children. And the reason I'm here is because many people um, have kids who are overly sensitive or undersensitive to certain situations. They don't transition well. They're pretty picky eaters. They um, can't stand the feel of their clothing. They have a difficult time making friends. They seem to be really moody. They have a hard time reading other people's facial expressions. And this really surprises parents. And when parents oftentimes bring this up in the well child checks, which are often pretty rushed, uh, most providers are uh, usually quick to dismiss the parent's concerns and will say, you know, it's really normal with your kid. Uh, most kids go through this phase. But what if your kid is not going through a phase? What if you've noticed that compared to other kids in your child's age group, or even maybe uh, children that you've had before, it seems like your child is overly sensitive to all kinds of things. And every day seems to be a battle. Never really know what their moods are going to be like, if something's going to set them off. Maybe they have night terrors. Maybe they have temper tantrums that last a really long time that seem to be really overblown. What if they respond to things that are said to them in such an extreme manner that um, you just find yourself wringing your hands and wondering, you know, what can you possibly do? What's wrong? What's going on with my child? Your child may have a situation called sensory integration disorder or sensory processing disorder. Oftentimes these are used interchangeably. I got interested in sensory processing when um, my child had some of these very same symptoms. And I look to pediatricians. I'm a nurse practitioner myself, and I should know how to take care of my child. I take, help give advice professionally to many families and parents and take care of kids. And um, this disorder is not something that the medical community has really recognized. It was uh, discovered um, by Dr. Jane Ayers, who was an occupational therapy uh, researcher and she discovered that there were kids with all kinds of sensory issues. Some had sound issues. They um, didn't, couldn't handle the sound of the vacuum cleaner or road noises, or they seemed to startle really uh, easily. Other kids had tactile uh, defensiveness. They would react when you'd put your hands on um, their body, and they would kind of spring back like that uh, when you'd go to hug them. Or they were not the type of kids that were easily comforted. Uh, they were type, type of kids who would um, really took forever to just get food into them and um, certain taste colors, uh, the appearance of certain foods were nearly impossible to get down and so um, we were wondering, you know, what do we do? We started doing the research and it turns out that sensory integration disorder is also something that is found on the autism spectrum uh, list. And um, some kids with autism or some kids with Asperger's will have sensory issues. But sensory integration disorder can be on um, something on its own. Um, it is also really commonly found as an overlap onto persons that have been clinically assessed for ADD and ADHD. Uh, sensory processing um, disorder can uh, be improved uh, with a combination of diet um, because a lot of these kids have um, either uh, toxins in their system that have to be gotten rid of or they are poor absorbers or assimilators of certain nutrients. They may be nutrient low on certain things and they also may have allergies or actual food sensitivities. Now food sensitivities are not necessarily food allergies but it doesn't mean that those reactions are not just as extreme. Um, my daughter does not flag um, as a person who's allergic to um, bread products uh, or dairy products and yet if we feed them to her she becomes very angry, very sullen, um, has rage and temper outbursts. When we eliminate those from her diet she um, does not struggle with the depression, she has more uh, ability to regulate her moods and uh, regulate her reactions and responses to things. Each kid that has sensory integration will have a combination of different traits. And on the website that um, I have, I can actually 
um, give a list of parents uh, to parents that can determine, hey, does it look like my child might have some of these issues? One of the first things that we need to do is eliminate all processed foods, feed only organic foods, uh, create regular calm routines, um, make notes on how does your child respond to certain things. Do they overreact or underreact to touch? Do they seem to be, you know, ignoring you when you're talking to them? Do they just really not hear you? Or are they extra reactive to certain situations? They will um, need consistency. They'll need routines. They may need help with transitions. Um, kids with sensory processing can grow into uh, regular functioning um, adolescents and adults, but they will need coaching from you, and they'll need sort of guidance and debriefing. Uh, but sensory uh, processing disorder is also really important. Sometimes um, it requires um, physical activity or certain specific physical activities, which we can call a sensory diet. Sometimes you can get help from occupational therapists. But there's a lot of information online um, for for parents to determine, you know, what kinds of activities and exercise should my child be exposed to every day to help maybe desensitize their overreactivity or bring up their hyperreactivity. Um, sensory processing um, can be something that can later um, in adolescence turn to be something very subtle and it's only when you go off like a food plan or a, or a routine plan that you notice that those symptoms can pro crop up and be an issue. Um, we found that sensory uh, kids are um, very imaginative, they have a lot of talents, um, and with the right support, um, they can be uh, amazing um, members of your family and amazing um, members uh, to society. Uh, this is Kimmer Collison Riss, um, just speaking for a few minutes on sensory processing disorder and what those features look like. Thank you.